Canada, the North American country that is the second largest in the world in terms of total area, is known for its beautiful natural landscapes such as the Niagara Falls, and for having 80% of its territory considered uninhabitable mainly due to the hostile climate with temperatures that can reach as low as minus 35 degrees Celsius in winter. Additionally, the Canadian nation holds one of the highest standards of living on the planet, with a high HDI and a per capita GDP of $51,000. However, several recent factors are seriously threatening the Canadian economy, with estimates suggesting that the nation lost $13 billion in 2021 due to a national shortage of labor and a lack of qualification in the manufacturing sector. In this video, we will understand why the Canadian economy is declining and what is leading several workers and companies in the country to migrate. To understand the current situation of the Canadian economy, it is first necessary to observe the scenario of commodity exports in the country. The nation is the fourth largest exporter of oil and gas in the world, thanks to its vast territory rich in natural resources, which represents more than 18% of the Canadian GDP. However, this vital sector for the country's economy has suffered a significant decline in recent years, mainly due to the shortage of labor that is increasingly limiting production and consequently the nation's exports. Despite the companies in the country creating strategies to attract workers, such as offering higher salaries and requiring little experience in the field, the situation is still a serious problem. Even with these companies seeking new strategies and trying at all costs to retain their employees, the Canadian job market is currently facing difficulties. Currently, there are still over 1 million job vacancies in both the industrial and financial sectors in Canada. To put it into perspective, one out of every three companies in the country faced a shortage of workers in 2021. Even though the government has been trying to encourage immigration for years, Canada, like many developed countries, has a very low birth rate, and immigration is not able to fill the labor shortage. Estimates suggest that by 2024, around 23% of the country's population will be over 65 years old, which means that almost a quarter of the population will no longer be able to work. This has led many companies, along with the government, to intensify their years of service, which in many cases include long working hours, leading to increased dissatisfaction among Canadians. Moreover, Canada's labor crisis is exacerbated by the influx of workers into the United States. About 45,000 Canadians migrate to the United States annually, while only 9,000 Americans immigrate to Canada each year. Canadian workers prefer to immigrate to the United States due to better opportunities and higher wages available there. Furthermore, with a commercial relationship that is already strong, especially after the 2018 United States-Mexico-Canada agreement, Canadian workers find it even easier to migrate to their neighbor, as Canadian and Mexican workers have specific work visas in the United States, which further incentivizes the migration of citizens from these two countries. Although Canada's trade relationship with the United States is beneficial for the Canadian economy, with exports of goods exceeding $270 billion, it does harm the nation to some extent, as it not only loses workers but also loses Canadian entrepreneurs who prefer to have a business in the United States because it is easier to raise capital to expand the business in the long run. In this context, approximately 71% of Canadian primary market exports are directly linked to the United States, with a Bank of Canada analyst stating that this could be problematic if the United States enters a new recession and raises import tariffs again. Additionally, concern over dependence on Americans is a constant factor for Canadian companies. In 2020, during a pandemic, Canadian companies observed a considerable drop in their exports, mainly due to the restrictions that the United States imposed on Canadian imports, which plunged the country's economy into a deep recession, with a 5.4% drop in GDP. Despite these problems, Canada, like other commodity exporting countries, has taken advantage of the commercial sanctions against Russia after its invasion of Ukraine, as the isolation of the Russians opened up significant opportunities for these countries to increase their exports, especially of oil and liquefied natural gas. 
Since the beginning of the invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, Canada's exports have increased by around $6 billion per month, showing how this conflict has helped boost trade for Canada. If this commercial blockade against Russia continues in the long term, this situation could further solidify Canada's position as one of the largest commodity exporters on the planet. However, it is worth mentioning that the commodity market is historically unstable, and economies dependent on the export of these products suffer from price fluctuations. Another point that could harm the Canadian economy further is the transition from fossil fuels to non-polluting energy sources, which has been done by major consumer markets such as Germany and China, who aim to meet carbon emission reduction targets. This situation, particularly in the long term, could adversely affect commodity prices, with the price of a barrel of oil constantly falling. Amid these new requirements, something that is already causing concern for the Canadian bank is that it has been estimating new fluctuations amid tensions in Europe and the Middle East, which could negatively impact Canadian exports. A good example of this is that in March 2022, after the start of the conflict in Ukraine, the price of oil reached $130, but by the end of the year, it had dropped to only $83. Another issue that cannot be underestimated by Canadians is the real estate sector, as a severe residential crisis has been increasingly affecting the country in the last two years. As many Canadians began working from home due to the pandemic, there was a significant increase in demand for homes, taking advantage of low interest rates and relatively affordable prices. In addition, Foreign investors have always looked favorably upon real estate in Canada, as over the last decade, the average price of real estate in the country has risen by 5% annually. This high demand has resulted in a significant shortage of housing in Canada, with many Canadian brokers unable to meet the demand for new homes. Despite the real estate market already being saturated, prices have increased by 50% between 2020 and 2022 with monthly mortgage rates rising by over 900 Canadian dollars. Estimates from the Mortgage and Housing Corporation suggest that if annual new construction rates continue until 2030, the country's housing stock will increase by 2.3 million. However, to meet the necessary demand, this number would need to be 3.5 million new residences. The price of Canadian real estate may rise even further, especially in cities such as Toronto and Vancouver. According to UBS, a Swiss bank, Toronto is the city with the highest real estate bubble in the world, and Vancouver has a significant market for comparison. Compared to its neighbor, the United States, real estate in Canada is on average 40% more expensive, even with a population nine times smaller. The Canadian government has attempted to control this increase by passing a law similar to the one in New Zealand, which prohibits foreigners from buying residential properties as investments for the next two years. As interest rates rise in Canada, there will be a direct impact on the majority of families who decide to buy a new home, with only 10% of families starting mortgage payments able to acquire their own homes within five years. This situation significantly contributes to the indebtedness of Canadian families and harms the country's economy as consumers do not have enough money to spend on goods and services. Among the G7 countries, Canada has the highest inequality between income and real estate prices. Concerns about rising interest rates to curb inflation go beyond this, and it is certain that this increase will directly affect the real estate sector which accounts for over 13% of Canada's GDP. If the real estate sector is subject to a new wave of high interest rates, it is likely that a new recession will occur in Canada, with some analysts predicting an economic slowdown in 2023 due to the ongoing global crisis. Canada has a strong economy and a well-diversified production chain, but it will face significant challenges in the coming years, from its dependence on the North American market to its low birth rate and a shortage of workers. Therefore, the country needs to seek new alternatives in the international arena to become less dependent on the United States, opening the way for new partnerships and seeking new strategies to attract immigrants to its businesses. This will help ensure that the nation remains one of the most prosperous on the planet.
Thank you for reading, and please comment below on the next topic you would like to see on this channel. Also, please like, subscribe, and share the content with your friends. Thank you again for your viewership, and see you in the next video.